In this lesson, I will show you how to solve a system of linear equations. A linear equation is one that when you go to graph it, forms a straight line. Solutions to that linear equation are all the points that fall on the line. If you have a system of linear equations, that means you have two linear equations and when you make the graph, you'll have two lines. The point at which the two lines intersect is the solution to the system. For example, here I've drawn in line M in blue and line N in red. These two lines represent a system of equations. The point at which they intersect is the point 0, 5. This means that the solution to the system of equations representing these lines is 0, 5, or x equals 0, y equals 5. Now sometimes it's not convenient to graph the equations you're given when you have a system of equations. And that's because two reasons. One is that maybe it's not in a format that's friendly, such as the slope-intercept format, which is y equals mx plus b. Now that's a really easy format to graph from. Or maybe it is that where the two lines intersect is a fraction, or it's a decimal, which is a really difficult thing to see precisely on a coordinate plane. And in these cases, you're going to want to solve the system algebraically. One algebraic method of solving is called the substitution method. And the goal of the substitution method is to get down to one variable and one equation. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do this. Let's solve a problem. Here you have a system of linear equations, and you want to solve and find the solution. As you can see, neither equation is in the slope-intercept form, so it's not going to be easy to graph. And we're going to solve using substitution. So the first step is to find a variable that has a coefficient of either 1 or negative 1. And you'll see why this is useful. But I notice here that the x in the second equation has a coefficient of 1. When you don't see a coefficient in front of the variable, you assume that it's 1. So I'm going to solve the second equation for x. I'm going to write it over here. If you have x minus 4y equals 11, to solve for x, you would add 4y to both sides. So add 4y to the left side and add 4y to the right side. The 4y's over here cancel out to 0, and you're left with x equals 11 plus 4y on the right side. What this means is now you've come to an expression that is equivalent to x. So 11 plus 4y can be used as x in any equation where the variable x appears. And this is where the substitution part comes into play. I just want to show you really quickly why it was useful to find a variable with a coefficient of 1. For a second, imagine that the coefficient in front of x had been 2. So you get to the point of 2x equals 11 plus 4y. If you wanted to solve for x, you would have to divide both sides by 2, and the 2's over here cancel out to 1, and then you get the expression x equals 11 plus 4y divided by 2. Now you're dealing with a fraction, which would be very difficult when it comes time to substitute. Now sometimes you're not going to be able to avoid this, but when you can, it's useful to find the coefficient of 1. Let me just erase these extra marks so you don't get confused. So you have the expression x equals 11 plus 4y. What you're going to do is take this expression and substitute it into the first equation where x appears. Now let me do that in blue. So if you have 4x minus 5, oh, I'm sorry, reverse that. You have 4y minus 5x equals 9. So substitute in 4y minus 5 times x, which you know is 11 plus 4y, equals 9. Now continue solving by expanding the parentheses using the distributive property. So you get 4y minus 5 times 11, which is negative 55, and then multiply by 4y for negative 20y equals 9. Now you can continue solving by combining like terms, and let me give myself some more room and scroll down a bit here. So I'm going to do the next step in red. So combine like terms by adding 55 to both sides, and the 55 on the left side will cancel out to 0, and you're going to get 4y minus 20y on the left equals 9 plus 55 on the right. 9 plus 55 is 64, so you have 64 on the right side, and I'm going to combine these two terms. So you have 4y minus 20y, and you get negative 16y. To solve for y, divide both sides by negative 16, and what you get after you do that is y equals negative 4. So I'm going to tuck this away up here. y equals negative 4. You already know that. 
Now, take this value of y equals negative 4 and substitute it into the expression you solved for x. And I chose this because we still need to find the value for x. You can honestly substitute y equals negative 4 into the first equation or the second equation. You'll get the same answer, but I'm just going to use this one that I've already solved directly for x, so I don't have to do any further algebraic manipulations. So let's do substitution. I'm going to do that in blue. If you have the expression x equals 11 plus 4y, and you know that y equals negative 4, you get x equals 11 plus 4 times negative 4. Now expand those parentheses, x equals 11 minus 16. And when you do that subtraction, you get x equals negative 5. And that means x equals negative 5, or taking these two things together, if you graph those two lines, the two lines would intersect at the point negative 5, negative 4, and this is the solution to the system of equations. I just want to recap a few things because we covered a lot of ground. So in this lesson, you learned how to use the substitution method, and the goal of the substitution method was to get down to one equation with one variable, and that's what I did here in this first step. And to do that, I looked for a variable that had a coefficient of either 1 or negative 1, and we saw why that was helpful. So once you get your equation, you substituted it into the other equation that you have in the system, so that's what we did here in this step, right? So I substituted in the expression 11 plus 4y for x, and then I simplified so that I could get down to solving for y, and I solved for y. Once I got this value for y, I used substitution again to find the value of x, and that's what I did here. I substituted the value I found for y into the expression I wrote for x to solve for x. And at that point, I got the answer to the entire question, which is the solution to the system. And in some cases, you know, you're not going to be able to avoid having that situation that I tried to detail, where you can't find a coefficient of 1. And in those cases, you're just going to have to be really careful about paying attention to how to work with that um, fraction if you get an expression as a fraction. So I hope that this makes solving some problems a little easier for you. Thanks for watching.